Hello friends, I'm Jade, and welcome back to episode 4 of Training the Commander. In the last episode, I talked about the importance of understanding each and everyone's learning language, and how to tailor your trainings and engage more of your group's time. What I want to chat about in this video are a few key characteristics of raiding that I believe are fundamental to creating strong, self-sufficient raiders. I will focus on elements of the game that play an impactful role in each and every encounter. We will discuss the importance of objective training, etiquette, stacking, boons and conditions, defiance bars, crowd controls, and compositions. And then lastly, we will learn how to understand the Guild Wars 2 heads up display and arc DPS. Although I will primarily be speaking to the why behind these fundamentals, if you are somewhat unfamiliar with any of these topics, you can go check out our more focused fundamental series that will cover all of the fundamentals in depth and in detail. These fundamentals should be introduced and reinforced over time, but once a trainee can equip these in their arsenal, then they will finally unlock the Guild Wars 2 Raid Easy Mode. Let's start in the order that I prefer to introduce them in. First off, the mission and the objective. The mission and the objective that you share with your group play a fundamental role in developing strong teamwork. We want to do away with the every man plays for themselves mentality and help trainees understand the everyone plays as one mentality. At the beginning of each training, I designate a minute or two to talk about the objective for the session and what I want to accomplish with the group. If it's the first time the training group is seeing a boss, then I will usually tell them that our mission will not be to kill the boss, rather we will be focusing on learning the mechanics of the fight and learning the roles. More of the more difficult bosses in Guild Wars 2 raiding require several special rules to be filled in order to earn a kill. Laying out clear objectives will help alleviate the pressure of not knowing what the goal is uh, of the run, and instead allow them to focus on learning the ins and outs of the encounter, and still feel like they've accomplished something even when they don't get the kill. Your goal as a commander should be to ensure that everyone is on the same page at all times. I'll make it very clear to my trainees that failure is expected and it's okay. Learn to embrace it, question why, learn from it, and then move on. Sharing the Raid Etiquette Guide the Raid Etiquette Guide was made to ensure that trainees and commanders have the best experience that they can. It'll help establish you as the leadership figure and reinforce your position. It's also important to explain the importance of mutual respect for each other's time. The Raid Etiquette Guide could be a whole video in itself, so I'd recommend going over it with your static training group prior to starting your journey, or at least recommending them to check it out on their own time, since those are expectations that we impress on all of our raiders and set them in place to ensure everyone maintains a healthy learning environment to raid in. You can read more on our Raid Etiquette Guide on our website. Let's move on to stacking. If you were to ask any of my trainee what is the one thing I always stress the most, I would put money on them saying that it would definitely be the importance of stacking. And this couldn't be more true. The Guild Wars 2 raiding fundamentals should be drilled into the minds of each trainee until stacking becomes instinctual. And I would wager that more than half of the wipes and raids can be attributed to people not stacking. It should be made very clear what the benefits of stacking are. Access to boons, quick revival, healing, and simplification of mechanics. I see plenty of groups fail simple encounters because a few people got lazy and chose not to return to the stack, leaving themselves vulnerable to literally everything. I'm always telling my trainees to deal with a mechanic and then as soon as they can, return to the stack. If you can successfully condition your trainees to master this technique quickly, then you'll only reap the rewards moving forward. Let's talk about telegraphs. Telegraphs are what we call the visual or audio warning that you will encounter before or during a mechanic occurs. This is a very important fundamental because it allows you to prepare for a mechanic before it happens. Telegraphs can be unique to an individual encounter, such as the boss's attack animations. However, there are a good many telegraphs that will show up across most, if not all, the raid wings. I'll shout out the golden border that appears around the edge of the monitor that warns players that they are in danger of failing a mechanic. Another very common telegraph is the special action key that will occasionally appear during an encounter. Most of the time when a trainee gets a special action key, it's telling them that they are solely responsible for a mechanic that could lead to a wipe or severe disadvantage for the group. The purple fixate jewel among several other floating icons will appear over the heads of players that are usually tanking or carrying a debuff that either needs to be weighted out or manually managed. If you can condition your trainees to notice these telegraphs early on, then you'll notice that they will adapt to all future encounters much easier. Let's talk about boons and conditions. 
This one doesn't need to be explained in depth immediately, but it is important for each raider to know what boons benefit them and why. They should understand the difference between offensive and defensive boons, and damaging or performance reducing conditions. Knowing how each condition negatively affects them when inflicted on themselves as well as how each condition can benefit them when applied to an enemy is useful knowledge to have. This information is part of the fundamentals of raiding, but can easily be taught piece by piece when applicable to the encounter and practice. Remember, too much information can be a bad thing. The way that I like to explain boons, buffs and conditions is by splitting them into categories. Damage boosts, survival boosts, damaging conditions and performance reducing conditions. If you are unfamiliar with these elements of Guild Wars 2, then I encourage you to check out our video that covers more of these in depth. For now, I'll give you a brief overview of what you should know. The damage boosts. These should be familiar. Their might, fury, quickness and alacrity. These four boons are very powerful and are essential for optimizing and increasing DPS output. There are several offensive buffs that are provided by specific classes such as Druid Spirits and Warrior Banners that can provide some tasty boosts to your squad's overall performance. Next is Survival Boosts, and these are our Protection, Ages, Resistance, Resolution, Stability, Swiftness, Vigor, Regeneration. These eight are focused on damage mitigation and mobility and healing more so than straight damage enhancement. Let's move on to Conditions. Damaging conditions such as Burning, Confusion, Poison torment and bleeding deal direct damage to a group or enemy based on the condi power of the attacker, whereas performance reducing conditions such as weakness, cripple, fear, blinds, chills, immobilizers, slows, taunts and vulnerability all reduce the effectiveness of the person they are inflicted on by reducing or restricting mobility, increasing skill recharge times and forcing attacks made by the target to miss or making the target more vulnerable to the attack. Now let's talk a little bit about crowd controls and defiance bars. The addition of the defiance bar or break bar as it's commonly known to Guild Wars 2 raids has created a significant need for crowd control skills. Almost every raid encounter will display a defiance bar that will need to be broken in order to mitigate unnecessary damage or to trigger new phases. It's important for trainees to have a basic knowledge of their crowd control skills available to them on their build so that they know what to do when you call for a CC. I like to cover CC skills prior to Matthias, which will be the first boss that will really challenge the group's ability to effectively CC the boss. To get my trainees invested, I personally like to set goals for my trainees to work on outside of our raid sessions. For instance, I pasted a link of Guild Wars 2 Wikipedia for crowd control skills and had them find all the skills and utilities in their builds that offered any hard or soft CC. Needless to say, CC bars haven't been a problem since then. Alright, let's talk about building compositions. So probably one of the more mysterious features of Guild Wars 2 is the squad UI and how it affects a composition. I've talked to many new commanders that have told me that learning how to set up compositions, i.e. knowing how, who in your team should go in which sub, is or was one of the more daunting mechanics to understand when commanding. In most open world PvE content or other 5 man group content, the squad composition UI doesn't affect you much at all. However, since the devs designed supports that share boons, buffs and healing off a priority system, it really pays to know how to organize your compositions to ensure that your teammates are receiving reliable supports as often as possible. Again, this topic deserves a full deep dive, so I will sum up the most important functions that you should be aware of as a commander concerning the squad interface. Since most boons and buffs are shared to a maximum of 5 my allies at a time, it's hard to determine who will consistently be getting those boons. Some classes gain massive damage buffs when under the effects of certain boons. You want to be aware of that, so that you can be sure to move that individual into the correct sub with the support player that provides the buff they need. Take some time to learn what classes builds are heavily reliant upon a support so that you can design your composition for success. Some classes can provide 10 man supports and don't need to be confined to any specific subgroup. When trying to organize your squad compositions, you should start first with your healers. If you have more than one healer, then stick one in each sub. Then distribute your supports so that you can be sure to have an important boons and buffs covered for each sub. Fill out the rest of your composition by distributing the damage players into the subs that provide the appropriate buffs that each one relies on. Depending on your team's composition, you may not be able to fit everyone that needs a certain buff into the same sub. 
In this case, you'll want to prioritize whoever is most reliant on that support or will make the most use of it for the group's overall success. Now, since we've just finished talking about the squad user interface, let's talk about the Guild Wars 2 heads up display, primarily where you'll see your buff bar and you'll learn the difference between trusting and having self-awareness. This is a fundamental that I like to enforce over time. Our role as a commander are to build trainees to be the best raiders they can be, so conditioning them to notice their own buff bar and their target's buff bar is an advanced fundamental that can answer the age-old question of what is killing us. Many raid bosses will gain buffs and debuffs for various reasons, ensuring that trainees know about these will help them proactively manage the mechanics in the future. Many encounters will have mechanics that can be ignored by strategically using group-wide blocks and ages. The problem with these utilities is that it can enable bad habits to develop once people start expecting that they will always have blocks and ages available to them. In the event that they don't receive the damage medication, then they just end up eating those mechanics which places more stress on their supports, who are often also new to those same mechanics. This is the difference between trusting and practicing self-awareness. If you pay attention to your buff bar, you will notice how to react based on the supports you receive and also improve your relationships with your support player and comrades. Now, I want to really quickly talk about Arc DPS and logs. Once you feel that your group is starting to really sink their teeth into the content and they're ready for the next step, then you can introduce them to your third party add-ons such as Arc DPS that can help them improve on an individual level. I like to post logs regularly after each kill or really good pulls so that I can evaluate the group's progress with them. Arc DPS can become problematic in situations where people begin to feel the need to remain the top DPS in a group and therefore make poor decisions that can put a team at a disadvantage. Greeting DPS should only be allowed as long as the team's composition can support it. With all that in mind, I encourage you to start paying close attention to each encounter so that you can see how these raiding fundamentals are applied in practice. And once again, if you are interested in learning about these fundamentals in depth, you can check them out on our YouTube channel or on our website. As usual, I hope this series has been helpful to you. So don't forget to gently caress that subscribe button and leave a like and stay tuned for the next video that will talk about breaking down an encounter. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.